Hey, what's going on? It's Rob with Spread Splash Fragrance Reviews. And as we close out the year 2023, I wanted to share with you some of my latest finds and pickups. If you're interested in finding out what those fragrances are, please stay tuned. All right, so the first fragrance I picked up was one that I had seen quite a few people give good praise to. Uh, newer release from the house of Valentino. It is Born in Roma, Coral Fantasy. This wasn't on my radar, but once I started seeing all of the positive reviews, I said, let me, let me check this one out. So I actually had a gift card that was sitting uh, on my dresser I hadn't used, and I went and took it, and I went to Dillard's, and I picked this one up. I got the 1.7 bottle. I wanna say it was like, 89 bucks 92 somewhere in that range um, it is indicative of most of the fragrances you're going to find at the fragrance counters for big box retailers for men i mean this is that flavor but it's got a little wrinkle to it and when i say that flavor i mean like a fruity sweet type vibe that's kind of what you smell at most of these fragrance counters currently and it's got that, but it's got a small wrinkle to it. And that is, it's got like this aromatic thing going on in the middle on the fragrance. It's got geranium and it's got lavender. Now for me, the lavender kind of comes off a little screechy, but overall it's a nice release. I'll say job well done because I think they hit it out of the park in regard to the target audience. And I think most 20 somethings that's who I believe this target audience is for this fragrance are going to appreciate and like this fragrance. So I can see this being a fragrance that's going to garner compliments and get positive attention. Um, I don't mean that older people can't wear it. You know, I've got the fragrance. I'm older. I'm not in my twenties anymore, but I would say if an older guy's going to wear this fragrance, just pull back on the spray. some. it's kind of got a youthful vibe to it, but it's a nicely done fragrance. All right, so I'm not gonna, you know, poo poo on it. You know, if you love this fragrance, more power to you. It'll be a fragrance in my collection that I'll reach for every now and then. I don't see it being something that I'm gonna be looking to be grabbing all the time, but I will give it some wears. I know my son is gonna give it some wears. So, from the house of Valentino, born in Roma, Coral Fantasy. Next is a fragrance from the house of Brioni, and this was actually their first release from their latest line of fragrances. This one is simply Brioni EDP. And I wanna say I first smelled this fragrance during the pandemic. Um, and when I smelled it, for some reason, I felt like it was kind of a blue-like fragrance, but I will say I was in a hurry and I actually uh, had COVID and I just didn't know it yet. I tested positive the next day. So I don't know if my, if my sniffer was off or not, but having the fragrance in my possession currently, I can say this is truly more like a Fahrenheit type fragrance. I mean, it's a violet based fragrance and uh, I can say it's Fahrenheit without all of the uniqueness of Fahrenheit, without the petrol opening, and it doesn't have as good a dry down as Fahrenheit, but something about the mid of Fahrenheit reminds me of this EDP. And this is a great fragrance for the office. It's a great fragrance for, um, I would say like business casual or even dressed up. It's got that vibe, it's got a classiness to it. Uh, it's not gonna scream or shout at all. And it's one that I highly recommend. I'm gonna do a Brioni video with all the latest releases because I've got them all in my collection now. And I think uh, in that one, I'll get into a little bit more detail, but this is definitely one worth checking out. If you've you know kind of passed on this one and maybe you've got the EDP Intense or one, or one of the other releases, this is one I think it's worth having in your collection because it's more like a signature scent type fragrance, staple fragrance that you can you know grab, go, and you're never gonna have to worry about you know what you smell like. That's just my personal opinion. Brioni EDP. From the house of Narciso Rodriguez, this is Blue Noir Parfum. Now, excuse my presentation, I don't have a top. This is a tester actually. And when I purchased the tester, I didn't realize that it didn't have a top. If I knew that, I probably wouldn't have got it. I would have gotten one with a top just because I'm a little particular in that regard. It doesn't really make the fragrance at all, but I've got all of the releases from Narciso Rodriguez for men, and it would have been cool to have the top. But, you know, neither here nor there. 
great fragrance. It is a departure from the other blue fragrances, the Blue Noir EDT, the, um, the EDP, the EDT Intense. It's different than those fragrances. It has a little hint of that DNA, but it is mostly an iris-based fragrance. I mean, truly, that's what it is. It's different to me than uh, Valentino Womo or even like um, Dior Homme or Dior Homme Intense. It's kind of got that vibe, but it's actually a little, it's a little bit different. Um, you know, do you need to have this if you have those? I would say no, but if you don't have any of the iris-based fragrances, this would be actually, this would actually be a great pickup for you. Uh, performs well, smells very, very high-end, classy, and it's got a, it's, it's slightly different than those other fragrances. So I would recommend trying this one. It's gotten a lot of positive um, feedback on YouTube, and I would just have to say I agree. This is a very well done fragrance, and you know, kind of, kind of a head scratcher in the sense of it's, it's that much different than the other Blue Noir fragrances in the line, but it's still a great release and one worth checking out. From the house of Narciso Rodriguez, Blue Noir Parfum. From the house of Kenzo, Kenzo Ohm EDP. Now, I actually have the EDT Intense version, uh, slightly different than this one, just slightly though. It's it's got um, it's got the cologne note in that one, and it's got a fig note, so it's a little different. Uh, but the essence of uh, that fragrance is in is is in this fragrance. All right. Now, I actually am an owner of the original Kenzo Ohm. I actually used to wear that back in the day, and that fragrance to me was more about like a salty sea accord with musk. It had other things going on. It had some green notes and nuances to it, but it was that was like the primary part of that fragrance. And it always had a heaviness to it. As good as it was, I always felt like it had a heaviness to it. And I don't want to say it made it hard to wear, but it you might hesitate. As much as I loved it, I wouldn't wear it for every single occasion just because of the weight of the fragrance. This new line doesn't really have the same weight as the original, but it does have some of the essence of the fragrance. So this one to me is more, it's like fruity, slightly metallic, and you know, it's fresh, it's uplifting, and it's different. It's a different take on um, a blue fragrance. And that's really what the, the original was probably one of the early versions of what a blue fragrance you know is today even though it was so different you know i think that this kind of carries that tradition it is uh it's slightly to the left of what most blue fragrances are doing this fragrance is it's like it's got the sweetness that a lot of people want it's kind of got the marine slash blue qualities that a lot of people are looking for plus it's got a twist which makes it different so it doesn't really smell like a blue de chanel or any of those other fragrances that kind of fit that build. It is, it has the feel of almost being like a niche fragrance, but it's a designer fragrance. And now I would say the quality of ingredients aren't necessarily on par with maybe a niche or more high-end fragrance, but it does have that, that wrinkle that makes it different. So definitely one worth checking out. It's gotten a lot of positive feedback in, in, fragrance, in the fragrance community, and I would have to say it's well-deserved. From the house of Kenzo, Kenzo Ohm EDP. A fragrance that I almost did not pick up because of all of the lackluster reviews I, have, I saw on YouTube. Now, there are not a lot of reviews on this fragrance, but every review I saw painted this fragrance as being meh okay not really that good i don't really like it it's not worth checking out but something about the fragrance kept calling me so i eventually pulled the trigger picked up a bottle and i'm so happy i did if i didn't have as much juice as i have i would have bought a backup bottle that day i like it that much from again from the house of ermengel de zigna this is verdigris this is from the i think it's either the double stitch or the triple stitch line and believe it or not this line is already discontinued from what I read online, but this fragrance is done so well for me. It is like the perfect zen-like, relaxing, chill-out fragrance. It's quite simply like this watery, clean, 
cucumber-like vibe with a slight metallic undertone to it. I, it puts me in the mindset of I'm on vacation, I don't have any place to go, I don't have anything to do, I'm chilling, the weather outside is beautiful, I'm in the yard, under a canopy, pergola, what have you, flip-flops on, sitting back in a leaning, uh, laid-back chair and having a cold drink and I'm just maxing out. That's the vibe of this fragrance. It is just so zen-like, so chill. It smells so refined. You got to check it out, okay? From the house of Ermengel de Zigna, Verdigris. Stunning fragrance from the house of Argos, Fall of Phaeton. You may have heard people talk positively about the fragrance, and I would have to second that. This is a very, very well done, juicy, fruity, almost like watery, uplifting, lavender fragrance. You don't really get all of that with lavender typically. They did something different with lavender that I really haven't experienced. And I want to say bravo. This is a great fragrance. If you've never gotten your nose on it, you've got to try it out. I want to do a full review on this fragrance when I've had more time with it. But I can just say with my limited time, this fragrance is just, I think it's amazing. All right. Check it out. Fall of Phaeton from Argos. From the house of Mas Milano, Russian tea. This is a fragrance that I've had my eye on for quite some time. It finally came, or it dropped to a pretty good price and pulled the trigger. This is not a fragrance for everybody. This is not a mass appealing fragrance. Not everybody is gonna appreciate this fragrance. This is a very masculine smelling fragrance. Ultimately, it kind of smells like a leather jacket that's been soaking in tea for days. I, I know that smell sounds a little weird, but that's what it is. It's more leather than it is tea though. And it's got like some smoky, like almost incense-like nuances that you get in the fragrance as the fragrance dries down. It also got, it also has labdanum in it. So it's got this smoky incense-y feel to it, but it's got tea on top. And the leather is more of the rough and tumble almost oily like leather you know as far as the accord for that through the fragrance so again it's not a mass appealing fragrance everybody's not going to enjoy this this is not a blind by fragrance but it's one i'm gonna you know i'm happy to have and i will wear it out on nights out i think it's a nighttime fragrance personally wear it whenever you want to but that's kind of when i see myself fitting this in to be worn so from the house of mas milano russian tea from the House of Gallagher Fragrances, this is Purple Powder. This is a relatively uh, recent release from that house and the notes are listed on the plaque. I don't believe that these are all of the notes. Uh, what's listed here is yellow mandarin, black and pink pepper, iris powder, cedarwood, benzoin, toasted cinnamon. I definitely get the toasted cinnamon. I don't know if I would say I think it's toasted, but it's definitely you definitely get cinnamon. Um, I get the mandarin. I also kind of get like this orange accord in the back in addition to like a lemon feel. And you definitely get the iris. The iris is not the lipsticky type feel that we're used to currently. It's more of a powdery, slightly floral, even like henna green type feel to it, right? But it's also got something in this fragrance that feels different. Like I can't put my finger on it it almost makes me feel like I'm in my yard cleaning up and I'm picking up sticks and twigs and maybe there's like you know I don't know like acorns or other things like laying on the ground and I'm picking those up too and it's just something about it's kind of got like this not the typical woody or green note but it's like something else that you kind of smell just when you go outside and you're in your yard it, it's a very familiar smell but I can't put my finger on it but it's a fragrance that I, I need more time to spend with before I can really say fully what I think about the fragrance and, and you know, how it wears. I've worn it a few times, but it's, I've always kind of struggled with, like, what am I smelling? I don't quite get everything that I'm smelling. So I'm kind of in that phase with the fragrance. I mean, it performs well. It doesn't smell bad. I, it, it's not like what you would, I guess you would say it's what is truly, like, appealing or something that makes you say, wow, it, it it's not that type of fragrance to me just yet. I'm still like, you know, dissecting it. But again, from the house of Gallagher Fragrances, Purple Powder. Okay, last but not least, 
from the house of Frank Boclat. All right, so before I get into the fragrances, you guys might be familiar with a fragrance released by this house that was called Cocaine and got a little bit of buzz uh, for obvious reasons, right, because of the name. And I started looking at that particular brand for that line and kind of thought I'd like to try something from that line if I ever get the opportunity. But I always felt like it was a little pricey. So one day I get an email from Fragrance Net and it's for a coupon that was a little bit higher than their typical coupon. I want to say it was like 32 to like 37% or something like that. And I was like, okay, so I went to the site and I've got this list I keep when I start going through, do you have this, do you have this? And it was like, no, 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 sold out, what have you. Then I finally got to the last one and it was like Frank Boclet. So I looked at the fragrances to see, hey, what do they have? And I noticed that line is called Rock and Riot, the one that cocaine is from. That line was heavily discounted toward, the, it seemed like they were trying to like get rid of them or they were on clearance. And I was like, okay, okay. So man, these are like all, 89 99 105 somewhere in that ballpark cost wise so i said let me figure out which ones i want to pick up so i narrowed it down to ashes vinyl and just so here they are this is just from the rocket riot line and you're going to typically see this one in a white box all right and you may even see it in a white bottle with the gold plaque and gold top then i also picked up um ashes Okay, and then I picked up one called Vinyl. All right, so they were all like a hundred, about 105 bucks or less, like to like 89.99. Somewhere in that ballpark is where the fragrance price is set. All right, so fragrances, the juice, ashes. Ashes is probably the most artistic fragrance of the bunch. It is not one that I think most people are going to enjoy very artistic it actually smells like vinyl like the <laughs> like the other fragrance is called vinyl that one doesn't smell like vinyl this one actually smells like vinyl if think if you think about like uh slip covers at your grandma's house that would be on her furniture something about that type of i don't know if you call it polyurethane or what up pvc or whatever kind of plastic that is it kind of has that type of smell with like some like a little bit of woodiness mixed in with it uh i've worn it a couple times i don't love it but i don't dislike it i've kind of got to get used to it and see what i really think about it overall again it's a very artistic fragrances put the notes on the screen so you can kind of see but first one is called ashes definitely an artistic release and somebody that might like like comme de garçon black or some other fragrances might like this fragrance but again it is definitely different it is not a blind buy fragrance okay the fragrance with the most mass appeal is vinyl all right now it's a very boozy fragrance now i've got Kute by unique luxury and that is probably the most boozy fragrance that i have in my collection but i will say this is the most authentic boozy fragrance i have and what i mean is this smells like jack daniels but not just Jack Daniels, it smells like a Jack and Coke. I'm not really a drinker, but when I go out and have dinner with my wife, I will you know, often get a, a cocktail from the menu or I'll say, give me a Jack and Coke. I know what a Jack and Coke smells like, and this smells identical to a Jack and Coke in the opening. It does more than that. It eventually evolves, but the opening is so nice if you like that smell of Jack and Coke. And it lasts. The op it's not like a little five minute opening and then it's gone. That smell is the overall, like the feel of the fragrance. It just like smooths out and it becomes less boozy, but that's like the overall smell. It's a great smell of fragrance and it, it has a lot of mass appeal. This is a fragrance I can see if people got their nose on it, they would enjoy it. But to me, it's not a fragrance you're gonna wanna wear all the time. But for certain situations, you might want to have a boozy fragrance like this on, and it might fit the need. So from the house of Frank Boclet, this is vinyl. All right, now the last one was kind of a surprise to me as far as what they did with it. It's called Just. Now what the line is, the Rock and Riot line, they've got the black line and they've got the white line. Now you will typically see 
if you go to the Frank Booklet website, they actually sell this fragrance paired with Married, and that bottle is white. So it's just Married. And those two fragrances are the fragrances that Frank Beauclair wore when he got married. I read that on the website. Him and his wife wore these pairing fragrances when they got married. Now, just to me, comes off like a um, a Sheepra, more so than like, you know, barbershop style fragrance. Even though people will kind of say it kind of has a barbershop feel, it feels more like a Sheepra to me. When it dries down, it kind of goes in the direction of maybe a, you know, a fougere like fragrance because it's kind of got a soapiness to it, but it really reminds me more of sheep, a sheeper fragrance in the sense that it's kind of got like this floral component. It's got the oak moss in it. It's got patchouli. Uh, it's got some animatic, animalic qualities where it's got like, I think it's got civet and, um, uh, I'm drawing a blank, the other animalic note, you're typically castorium. So it's got those two chords in it, and it's got all that going on. And, and I think in addition to maybe even having some aldehydes, I can't recall, but it's modernized. Man, this is really nice. If you like, like, you know, fougeres or sheepras, you like the classic feel, but maybe more modernized, definitely check this one out, man. I was really surprised at how good this fragrance smells. The first thing it made me think of was Antaeus by Chanel. I've got that in the collection. I've got a few other fragrances that are kind of in that vein. It's kind of got that vibe to it, but it's really smooth and it's really well blended. Like I, th I this if for those that like that type of fragrance, you got to put this you got to put this as a, you know, you got to check out fragrance. Just by Frank Beauclet is a fragrance you've got to check out if you like Sheepers or Fougeres, you like the classic feel, but you want to get something that's a little bit more modernized. This is not gonna, you know, I don't think it's gonna blow anybody away, but I think you're gonna be so surprised at how well done this fragrance is. All right, last one from the house of Frank Bocolet, just. Guys, those are my fragrances that I picked up to close out the year 2023. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know some of the fragrances you picked up in this year and what were your favorites. Uh, I hope everybody has a blessed New Year's and I look forward to bringing you more content in the year 2024. Thank you for rocking with Rob at Spray Splash Fragrance Reviews. I appreciate your time. Until next year, peace.